I will be talking about these things. Um, uh, general introduction. As I told you, I won't be going to some showing some examples from nature and those there. Anyhow, general introduction and uh, molecular nanotechnology, present and future areas of applications of nanotechnology, an adverse effect of nanotechnology and concluding remarks. Right? Okay. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Can you hear me at the back? Shall I come and check? Sure. Can you all hear me? Right, good. Right. When you go and search in the internet, you all, I hope you are familiar with Yahoo and Google, right? When you go and search introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology, you will get 1.5 billion of hits for this just a search. So just imagine how many resources are available with a free of charge. So without going for unnecessary applications in the internet, why don't you search with the target of your level? That's a good practice. So what I'm going to show here is you have enough number of sources here. So only thing you have to log in. You don't need to log in, you don't have to pay. I hope you all have dongles and internet facilities at your home. So you can simply search, get some important points which help you elevate, right? Right. Machines. Just at this point, imagine that human is a machine. Don't argue with me that human is not a machine, okay? For instance, just in this. What are the similarities between these three subjects? Maybe I can tell you, all three do work, right? And all need energy to work, and all need rest, something like that. But what is the major difference between these three subjects? Can you all hear me? Better? Yes. OK. What is the major difference between these three subjects? Can anyone tell me? What is the major difference? Okay, I'll tell you. At this moment, you are not familiar with STM. That is called scanning tunneling microscope. Human machine, you are really familiar with that. Huh? Excavator machine. So, a human machine is good for just lift a brick or just to pull a table, just to pick a ball, something like that. But the excavator is used to for this huge construction work. And the scanning tunneling microscope is used to assemble, to manipulate, to handle atoms and molecules. I will talk about that one in detail later on. So, really human thought, okay, human is enough to get something done, get a work done. But later he realized, okay, for a construction work, this human energy capacity is not enough. So he made this huge instrument. But now they have realized 20, 30 years back, why don't we go beyond that in a small scale? If we are going beyond that, at the small scale, what do we need? So we need to assemble or manipulate handled atoms. For that, what do we need? Scanning tunnel and microscope. Okay? I will talk about that in detail later on. So that is the major difference between these three machines. The scale in which they are working. Right? So, let us do a small exercise. I'm not going to ask you because we do not have much time. So if I ask you to pick a ball, can you pick it for me? Sure? Yes, there is no puzzle on that. You can, of course, because the size of the ball is enough to be handled between your arm or hand. And conversely, hand is big enough to be handled with this ball. If I ask you this question, can anyone pick this needle for me? Of course you can. But you need more care. You need to spend much time because the needle is not that much big, like a ball. So therefore, hand is not so small to interact intensely with this needle. Therefore, you won't pick it quickly as you did for ball. You need much time. So what about this? A tiny sand particle. Can you all pick you using your bare hand, fingers? No, why? The particle is not big enough to be handled with your fingers or hands. <coughs> you might argue, oh, we can just press and bring it to me. I don't want you to do that. You have to just pinch and bring it to me. You can do it. So what do you need? If I gave you a tool to pick some small things, just circuit element, definitely you can pick it. Am I right? Okay. 
and write. So, if this is the case for a sand particle, what do you think about an atom? Can you? Can you see the atom? No. We are saying that I have, some people say I have a very good eye power, eyesight. But we are all blind. You know why? The spectrum has a huge range. The visible is just a tiny part, portion of that. Can you see an IR? UV? X-ray? Radio wave? Can you see there are waves here? But we see only the tiny portion. But still we proud that we are having good eyesight. So that is a wrong conception. Okay. But fortunately, we are able to see colors. We can identify using colors. But rest are not, we are not sensitive for rest of the radiation, right? So what do we need to do deal with uh, atoms? Scanning tunneling microscope. This is something new. How many of you have heard about scanning tunneling microscope? Have you heard about scanning tunneling microscope? No. Is there anyone who has heard about scanning tunneling microscope? Okay. How many of you have heard about scanning electron microscope? SEM. Raise your hands like this. Wow, good. So maybe I can ask some question on that. The STM is the artificial eye to do manipulation or assembly or just to see an atom, individual atom. Can you believe this? Now we are able to see an individual atom. It was uh, considered it is an impossible task. Human never going to see an atom. But we have which? How? Scanning tunnel microscope. So invention of the scanning tunnel microscope was awarded with Nobel Prize in 1986. Nobel Prize is considered as the highest award one can have. But to a person or a scientist to be awarded by Nobel Prize, the invention or the discovery should have real benefit. We should realize the benefit. So that it takes 20, 30 years to realize the real benefit and the person or scientist to be awarded by Nobel Prize. Sometimes the person who invented dies when he is nominated for that, right? So what was the Nobel Prize in medicine? Last 2010. How many of you want to become a doctor? No one. Okay. So what was the Nobel Prize? Do you know that? I will ask that question later. Be ready. So, what is the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010? How many of you want to become a scientist? No one. <laughs> okay. A person who invented or discovered one atomic thickness of graphene sheet. It was a good business as well. So, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Anyhow, that is beyond our discussion. So, this scanning tunnel microscope it was invented in 1981. But he, they, those two scientists were awarded Nobel Prize in 1986. How many years back? Just four years. At this point, you can realize what was the importance of this scanning tunnel microscope. Isn't it that? Do you realize the importance of this one? Just four years it took, right? And it is generally considered the way to nanotechnology. These are the two genius, Remy and Roshan. 1981. This is the IBM laboratory. Have you all heard about IBM? A huge uh, computer industry, a company. So this is a real scanning tunnel in microscope. Did you see? That just si compare the size of the scanning tunnel in microscope with their faces. Just a small one. But in reality, it looks like this huge room. You know why? Because we need to have some special conditions for that. Ultra -tech. Ultra cooling. To maintain those conditions, we need to have huge setup. It's like a hell. I will show you the image later. So these two are the genius and scientists, IBM researchers, invented the scanning tunnel microscope. So what you see here is three different views of scanning tunnel microscopes. Schematic of SEM, just to teach, just to listen, just to learn, just to understand how this STM works and all that. Maybe I can explain you later. The second one is a close-up look at this STM thick surface, how they interact. 
and third one is the real time instrument, part of the instrument. This is not the, the whole instrument, the part of the instrument. So, what you see here is a sharp tip. I told you at the beginning, to deal with small atoms or small particles and small things, you need to have a sharp, sharp edge. So this is kind of edge. In an ideal tip, you need to have one atom, but that is an impossible task. Normally, we do not have one atom at this point. Okay, but maybe later on, up to 10 or 20 years, we might be able to get it. At this point, we do not have an ideal scanning probe. Probe is a tip like this. Okay. When you scan the sample, if you imagine that this is a sample, you have a probe, you scan the sample, you will get the response as a signal. You don't directly see the atom. Instead of what, in the, that, what you see is the signal. But I will talk about that in detail later. So, so scanning tunneling microscope was the extraordinary invention of the last two, three decades, right? And I think at this point, this is enough figure about the scanning tunneling microscope to pick and manipulate individual atoms and molecules, this is an ideal tool. Fundamental requirement for nanotechnology. So who is this? It has been written there. Silvio Attini, okay. Don Eagler, the, the, the scientist or physicist who first manipulates the atom. The scientist who first touches the atom. The scientist who first moves the atom. Right? In September 28, 1989, just nine years after the invention of the scanning, tunneling microscope, he moved the atoms. IBM physicist done it there, as I told you. And he arranged 35 seven atoms to spell out I, B, N letters. Right? I will show you the image later. So at that time, at the first instant, it took almost one day or 22 hours to arrange the atoms. But now, just 15 minutes. The technology has developed so much. Okay? So this is the image. What you see here is individual atoms. I, B, M. Okay? This was placed using scanning tunneling microscope. So that is the key of the nanotechnology. Especially this is important in computer industry. You know, we had two revolution, industrial revolutions. So one is uh, a recent one, nano, uh, molecular biotechnology. Another one is, what is that? Information technology. This is uh, widely used in information technology, that is microchips, nanochips, hard disk, to increase the memory of a hard disk, pen RAM, these sort of things. This is widely used. But that's why this is a discipline, uh, this is particular discipline of that uh, movements of atoms. But where the huge number of ad applications are there is molecular nanotechnology. If you take human as an example, we are made up of molecules, atoms, cells. Okay, I will talk about later on. So this is a real original STM at IBM laboratory in 1981. So these images have copyright to IBM, but you can randomly come across these images when you search in the Google or Yahoo. So what is this? I asked the same question just a while ago. Scanning electron microscope. Is there any difference between scanning electron microscopy and scanning tunneling microscopy? Is there any difference? Can anyone tell me? Yeah. 